ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يضلل فلا هادي له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم we start in the name of Allah and we send blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We thank Allah. We thank Allah for bringing us into another Ramadan, right? And it is so far along Ramadan that alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, that we are almost we are amongst the last ten nights and last ten days of Ramadan. We thank Allah. We thank Allah for allowing us to come to another Jummah. We all remember the pain of when the masjids had closed for two years. And that now that we can come back and gather, we thank Allah that we are back here again. And we thank Allah for allowing us, for giving us an opportunity to benefit a small amount today, inshaAllah. See today, alhamdulillah, today is a very beautiful day. And every beautiful day always is a little bit sad, right? We think about, we think about uh, the wedding nights of people. And what better wedding night and what, what would happen at a wedding night than the bride's, the bride's uh, mom crying, right? Like you think about your whole life and you don't think about your wedding, and then when it's time, you start thinking about the last of everything. The last time that, you know, you'll be spending your family before someone else is inside of it. And things along those sides, right? Another beautiful day is the day that, you know, you move into a new house. But the day you got to move out of your one that you grew up in is a sad day. Many of us have came from different countries. And although we are looking for new opportunities, we also had a sad day of when you left your home country. And just like that, today is a beautiful day. And I, and I emphasize this and I, because today is the last Jummah of Ramadan. And us as humans, us as mankind, as Ihsan, we do this thing where we cling and we make home to something that is temporary. We make home to something that is temporary. Ramadan was not, is not supposed to be a year, it was not a year long, right? It's not two years long, it's not, right? It's just 30 days. But yet we have changed so much in these last three weeks. We've changed the way we sleep. We've changed the way we eat. The way we talk to people, the way we do ibadah, we change so much about ourselves in these last three weeks that you would look to somebody and you say like, wow, you're, you're in another place. And that's what Ramadan is. But we've clinged to it and we've made it home. But today, and the reason why today is a sad day, the small reason why it's a sad day is because today is the last Jum'ah of Ramadan. Jum'ah is a Mubarak for us. It is a blessing for us. It is the time that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases the Barakah for us in whatever we may do. And the best way that I can, you know, describe this, this blessing of Jum'ah is 
whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts barakah into something, it feels like it does not fade. It feels like it lasts for a long time. The same way of Ramadan. Right? There's two feelings of Ramadan. It's Ramadan, you know, came and left. It, it flew by us. The other feeling of Ramadan is that you think about it and you're like, well, I can't even remember what I ate for iftar two days ago. Because it feels like it's been so long. And this is the, this is the aspect and the quality of barakah. That it feels like it lasts forever. The same time when you ask Allah to put barakah in your money and the same, right? Like for months and months you've been trying to save and somehow, somehow in the last few weeks of when you asked Allah for this, it worked. So we, we, we glorify today and we make today a special day to understand that in just a few, and from when we do Dhuhajj right now, and then we do Asr, this the last Jummah of Ramadan is almost over. So I urge everybody to take advantage of what the few hours that we have left of the last Jummah of Ramadan. Because later, in a week, it will be the final moments of Ramadan. And to finally put your best foot forward, to keep urging on. A lot of us, you see, there's a few feelings out there today. One of the feelings is that I may not have been taken, taken, uh, be taking advantage of Ramadan this year. And a lot of us have very valid excuses. Like a lot of us, there's many students here today. Many people who are uh, consumed with exams. Maybe you're on rotations. Maybe, you know, you, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with a, a child. And that child is, this is the first Ramadan for them. And whatever it may be, and it may be valid. But my brothers and sisters, today, today, and I said this before, but today is the last Jum'ah of Ramadan. If there is any other time to put yourself aside, to make efforts towards Allah, to make efforts towards Allah, right now is the time. Right now is your time to strive for Allah. You see, Talha ibn Ubaidullah radiallahu anhu had met two men in his life. Two men at the same time, they took Islam at the same time. One of them died a shaheed and the second one died of natural causes a year later. And shortly after, he had a uh, he had a dream about them and he was at the gate of jannah he was at the gate of jannah and someone came out of the gate of jannah and he admitted the one that died a year later and he told the, the man that admitted him told the one that died a shaheed that your time hasn't come yet so please go back and Talha uh, radiallahu anhu, he wakes up excited. He just got a beautiful dream and he starts telling people and eventually the news reaches the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when he asks him about this, he says, what are you so surprised of? What are you so surprised of? The man that died later, did he not experience another Ramadan? Did he not experience another Ramadan? That during that time, he spent fasting and doing good deeds and worshipping Allah. That if we want to, you know, take advantage of the few hours and the few days that we have left of what this Ramadan is, because it does feel like forever, right? And Ramadan, when you get to the weekend, it's right, the whole week has felt like you've been fasting for the whole year. But reality, it's only been three weeks. And subhanAllah, subhanAllah, that somebody can be raised to the a higher ranks of a shaheed. 
right? People make dua for this. Right? They make dua, they say, Ya Allah, allow me to die in the way of you, the way of fighting for you. And in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ explains that just a being present, being aware, being understanding that today and the few time, like the few moments right now are things that could raise your ranks. So the first thing that I urge everybody to understand is where you are. Where you are. Because you cannot take full advantage if you don't understand where you're starting from. Where you are square one. So Alhamdulillah, say Alhamdulillah for the things that you did in Ramadan. And if you could not accomplish some of the, if you can, if you're, you feel like you're not on track, right? Everybody's got a personal khatam and, you know, maybe you're on, tra you're off track for that. Or some of the goals that you set by, you already forgot, right? Just like our New Year's resolution, right? You, you set them in January and then you forget them by the 15th. And so remind yourself of what you were telling yourself you would become at the start of Ramadan. Because if right now, if you want to take a pivot, right now is the moment. Because inshallah, as these nights, these nights are the most blessed nights of the whole entire year. Of the whole entire year. And it is one thing to be present. It is one thing to know what the, what the, uh, you know, what the state is. But some of us come to a point where we're like, yeah, I know, but that is not helping me get up off my bed, get off off my couch, read more Quran, make more dua. That is not making me do that. Because as I urge to the second point, I call up, I, I you know, want to reflect on just two small ayahs of the Quran. And they are the ayahs in Surah Yunus, ayah 24 and 25. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا مَثَلُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا إِنْ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ مِمَّا يَأْكُلُ النَّاسُ وَالْأَنْعَامِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the life of this world is like rain. Is like rain that we sent down from the sky and it has been absorbed by the plants and the earth from which humans and animals eat. That this life, this dunya, is just Allah providing you with some small sustenance that you consume. And he goes on to say, "Hatta ida akhadat al-arz zukhrufaha wa zayyanat wa dhanna ahluha annahum qadirun alayha ataha amruna laylan aw naharan faj'alnaha hasidan ka'an lam taghbil ams." It goes on to say that But the earth has taken on its finest appearance That when we are living our life We are understanding this dunya It looks so sweet Right? We think about every two weeks we're getting paid and on that payday, we're like, okay, now I can, you know, I can do what I want. I can, you know, buy this thing. I can, I can go out to this restaurant and so on and so forth. And it looks so beautiful. And people think that they have power over it. That when you get paid or when you get something good to you, you sign, you sign the new papers of your house. You finally get married, that you think you have power over it. And in an instance, Allah continues and He says, Then 
the fate we commanded comes to it. By night or by day, we reduce it to stubble, as if it had not flourished just by the day before. That with any instance, with any instance, Allah could take the, that which He gave you. And remember when I said that today is a beautiful day. Today is a beautiful day. My brothers and sisters, Allah could take today from us. Allah could take today from us. That this is just dunya. That what we consume in this dunya stays here. It does not come with us to the akhirah. Allah says this is the way that we've explained the revelations to those who reflect. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, He says something and he, and he draws the comparison of the dunya to the akhirah. And so my second point for everybody is that if you don't feel like you are getting up with full energy, with the maximum amount of effort that you can give, Remember that this is just temporary and that we are working towards the Akhirah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the following ayah, He says, Wallahu yada'u ila dar as -salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that God invites everyone to the home of peace. This dunya is not our home. This dunya is not our home. We become attached to things that are temporary. We become attached to the things that are fleeting. This is our quality, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has qualities. Angels have qualities. And the quality of mankind is to become attached to things that are temporary. This is just our life. And... But God tells us, he says that this is not your home. That if you are working towards akhirah, that inshallah, Allah invites you. He says invites you. That Allah calls you into the home of peace. That Jannah is our home. You know that, that sukhoon, that, that peacefulness that you feel when you're at home? When, you know, somebody invites you over and, right, it's, it's fun. It's fun to go to some other people's homes and, and talk to them and enjoy. But there's something peaceful of just sitting at home, right? Reading your salat at home, eating the food at home, right? We all, we all understand the feeling of eating your mother's cooking, right? Like there is nothing more beautiful than that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, although you feel this peacefulness, that this is still not your home. Your home is yet to come. So I urge and I and I want to you know reiterate my two points. That this day is a beautiful day. And we have to understand and be aware that today is beautiful and that today is fleeting. But our actions in these last few days of Ramadan need to solely be for the akhirah. And what I'm not saying, don't go to work. I'm not saying don't care, take care of your family and, you know, take care of the things you got to do. But in the proportion of free time that you have, dedicate it all towards the akhirah. Start to furnish your home. Right? Allah calls you to home, but start to furnish it. Right? There are many, and inshallah, in the next part, I will talk about a way that you can furnish it. Akuli kauli hada astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al muslimin fastaghfiru innahu huwa al ghafur al rahim. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, 
والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم in the short you know five minutes that i have i want to talk about just a story a story is very easy to listen to especially i know everyone's fasting today at the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there was a young boy an orphan and he had a small piece of land that he was left from his parents and what he wanted to do was he wanted to build a wall around his land he wanted to build just a small wall around his land and so his neighbor had a tree that came that came in uh in the way basically if he wanted to build this strong wall he would not he would have to incorporate it and so he asked his neighbor he says you know can you please gift me this can you please give gift it to me you know i i don't have much i'm an orphan my parents have and he's speaking for himself and the man says no he says no this is mine i don't want to give it to you and so the boy be sad in that he can't build this perfect wall that you know guards his small piece of land that he was left from his parents he goes to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and out of sh- sheer empathy we need to we need to realize this hold on right the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was an orphan by 5 7 never met his father his mother died subhanallah so out of sheer empathy he goes to the orphan and he asks on his behalf he says you know can you please gift this tree to him can you please gift it to him and still the man now angered at the fact that he escal- right imagine your your brother or your sister goes to your parents and tells on you right this is what they're feeling this is what he's feeling he's like no now no right maybe i'll think about no now absolutely not and he was so hard and, and to the point that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and so where i'm talking about you got to furnish your home he says if you gift this tree Allah will give you a tree and jannah. That Allah will give you a tree and jannah. And still he says no. And amongst the people that were listening to this whole altercation, there was a man. There was a beautiful sahaba. Right? By the name of Abu Dahdah. And Abu Dahdah was known for a few small things. And one of the things that he was known for was his land he was known for having one of the most beautiful lands amongst everybody he had many trees many uh, a well a home and so on and so forth and it was so beautiful that everybody knew and he went to the prophet he ran without any without any hesitation and he asks him he says if i give this tree to him do i get a tree in jannah and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says yeah the deal is still on And so he goes to the neighbor. He says, "Do you know of my land?" And he's like, "Yeah, you're famous for it. That's what you're known for." And he says to him, he says, "I'll give you it all. Everything, every last bit for that one tree." And the man was like, "What? Are you crazy? Right? Like you're giving up everything for this?" and he said yeah so he gives the tree right he gives the land and he he owns now he owns the the tree of the neighbor and then he gives it to the boy and then he goes to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he says right out of sheer excitement out of sheer excitement right you know when you find a good deal and you're like you're trying to tell your boy yo i find, i got a good deal on this car i got a good deal on this right you're trying to tell them And so out of sheer excitement he asked how many trees are there? Oh no sorry he says how many parts of the tree meaning the fruit are there for me in jannah? And he keeps asking. And he keeps asking to the point where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was just waiting for the answer. And he eventually Abu Dahda gets up and he goes home because now he's got to talk to his wife. He just gave his house up. Right? And so he tells his wife and he calls his wife. And he calls her from outside his house and he says or he says oh beloved like please come out. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. He says please come out 
that I have gotten an amazing deal, an amazing deal. He says, I gave up everything for this tree in Jannah. And she says, beautiful with Iman, she says, you have done a beautiful deal. And to the point, and she was so excited because she knew what I was talking about. She knew that the Akhirah is forever. Because what she does is she goes to her children and from her their pockets takes the dates that they took for, you know, earlier in the day. And they leave them there and they, they go on. You know, my brothers and sisters, it is upon us to work for the Akhirah, to work in this small time, right? There was another hadith of the Prophet wasallam where uh, he was gifted a goat or a lamb. And I, he left the house for a little bit and Aisha radiallahu anhu starts giving it to everyone that's needy. All that was left was the shoulder. And the shoulder of the lamb, it's not, it's not got a lot of meat, right? And so... When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam returns, she, has to tell, she tells him, she's like, you know, all that is left is the shoulder. And no, he corrects her in the most beautiful way. He says, we have everything but the shoulder. Because he knew that whatever you consume stays here. That if thought you eat that you've been waiting on stays here. If you loved something, if you loved it with every ounce of your heart, you would give it. So my brothers and sisters, I, 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 you know, we ask Allah to always keep us on the straight path. We ask Allah to always keep us on Surat al-Mustaqeen. We ask Allah to always keep in our hearts, keep in our hearts and to, for us to remember that the Akhirah is our home, that Jannah is our home and we ask Allah, we ask Allah to give us Jannah inshaAllah, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Wal Asr, inna linsana lafi khusr illa ladhina amnu amil salihati wa tawasub al-hakim wa tawasub al-sabr. Aqeem al-salah.